Yeah, I think it would be nice to start with a prayer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Om. Om. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Saksat Param Brahma, Tasma Sri Gurave Namaha. The Guru creates, the Guru preserves, the Guru dissolves the universe. The Guru, in fact, is the absolute. Salutations to the Sat Guru. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase the Guru is auspiciousness, embodiment of truth, knowledge, bliss, salutations to the one who is beyond the worlds, peaceful, independent, and radiant. Om Gum Gurave Nama, Om Gum Gurave Nama, Om Gum Gurave Nama. Jai Sri Satguru Satchitananda Ji Maharaj Ki. Jai. <sighs> Thank you. So Swami Sagunananda, I want to start by asking you, what inspired you to become a Swami and how did you know that this was your calling? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is not going to make any sense whatsoever. So after my partner passed away, he was the one that brought me here and introduced me to Gurudev. Uh, he knew him since the early 70s in New York. So when I, I I had come here several times, you know, before he had passed away, he kept sending me up here. And Swami Satchitananda is your guru, you know. So then after he passed away, when I came up here and I was in total, I had fallen sort of in, like into a pit emotionally and I couldn't get up out of it um I was in the back room with Gurudev which was that room over there was his office you know before he would come out to satsang hall you know like it would be the shanti room mm -hmm. and <clears throat> we were talking and I was crying and I was holding my head and I was standing up and I was going around in circles <laughs> Literally, I was crazy. And I said, Gurudev, I said to him, all of a sudden, can I, and he was just watching me. I said, can I have an initiation? And he goes, sure. You want to come to the ashram and be a Swami? And as soon as he said that, for the first time in my life, anything made sense. It's like a light when turned mm. on. I didn't have to think. It was like somebody said, you want a billion dollars, mm. you know? Do you want it? Mm. Like that, you mm. know? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? I thought, am, am, this is such a great honor, you know? I didn't think I deserved it. I said, yes, of course, yeah. And that was it. That Then I knew. Uh, you know, uh, what my life's purpose was, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this experience that you had, was it, was it like very foreign? Like you, previous to it, maybe you wouldn't even have imagined that you could have a sense of clarity like this. And then all of a sudden you were just experiencing something that just felt so clear and right. It was a clarity of a different theme. You see what I'm saying? On this particular issue, uh, growing up, I, I had lucid dreaming. I, I thought everybody did. Um, I, I knew how people felt. Sometimes I could knew their thoughts. I thought everybody was like that, intuitive, mm. you know? So I, I had clarity. I just didn't know what I was supposed to do after he passed away. I, you, when you lose the one person you love, your husband, you know, then you don't know what your life is for. If, 
You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. So I'm like, what am I doing here? What am I supposed to do? So, uh, yeah. Mm. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. But like when you're describing it, it just, it, it, I got the sense that it was something new that you hadn't experienced before. Like For this you know. particular issue, you okay. know, it was a clarity that I didn't have before. And, and pretty much always I had an intuition what I should be doing, but I didn't after he passed away, you know, mm. so. Mm -hmm. You mentioned being in like an emotional pit. Mm -hmm. it, is that, you know, directly related to the loss of your partner? Well, that was mm -hmm. it. That was the pit. The loss. Yeah. It, it, it's like losing a child or something like that, you know? Yeah. So that was the love of your life, you know? So how much does that hurt, you know? Hmm. But uh, it was his time to go so I could come here. That's what the universe decided, hmm. you know? For a person that's experiencing that emotional pit mm -hmm. as a result of loss or whatever it is, and they might not have the opportunity, right, to meet Gurudev, do you have any insights into some action that a person could take when they're in that state that might bring them out of it? No, everybody's different. Mm. You know, everybody has a different understanding, a different karma, you know, uh, different karma, different calling. They live in a, everybody's a whole universe to themselves, you see? So how they deal with stuff is up to them. For somebody to say, do this, you know, I, I couldn't say that once. It, it's such losing one's partner is such a devastating thing that there's no one answer for how to fix that, you know. Mm. But for you, this this was the answer for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm. Has there been a, uh, a particular teaching or a couple particular teachings from this tradition that have been especially important? for you the hindu tradition uh it's an integral yoga integral or, yeah. yoga um faith because i always thought i'm doing everything by myself i'm very capable and you know smart <laughs> found out <laughs> that uh, there is a, a power in me that is doing and I'm not doing anything, you know. Most of the time I get in the way, basically, you know. Yeah, so, uh, but faith that, um, you know, that supreme power uh, is in me and he's taking care of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very interesting to me. I also feel like I get in my own way mm -hmm. and that this teaching of, of of just remembering to open up to the fact that I'm being guided, right? Is there a way in particular that you are able to remove yourself when you get in your own way? Like like what's what's your process if you can share when you notice yourself getting in your own way to then return to being on the higher level? Well, if I haven't learned a lesson and I get really whacked in the head really hard, that's one way, but I don't want that to happen anymore. So if I'm not clear and it's like, I feel like I'm swimming against the current, I'll say, Gurudev, help me, make it clear. What am I supposed to do? Make it clear, I'm not getting it, you know? I'll ask and he answers every time. Every time. Mm. Mm -hmm. How does he answer? He answers. He, he, either it happens or, you know, like, okay, there's different situations. Like uh, years ago, I had owned the house down uh, Holly Lane. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I decided um, at 
at nine o'clock at night, I got the big urge to go under the house and do something to the pipes, to the water pipes. It had to be done right now. Something changed. I had bought a part. And as I was walking toward to go to the basement, I had a gut feeling, a force said, not now, not now, not something was holding me back. And I'm like, I got to, I got to do this now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> have you ever done that? Yeah. You've got a clear message and you're like, no, 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 this is crazy. I got to do this now. And I proceeded downstairs and busted the pipes and there was water running everywhere. And we had to call people at nine o'clock at night. I don't know. I can't even remember. It's been 20 some years to come and save, save me <laughs> before the house floated away, you know. So things like that, you know. And then there's other ways too. There's, there's messages. Like I grew up with this dream, you know. Um, I had this recurrent dream of Gurudev mm -hmm. when I was in Greece, you know, suburban Athens, when I was three, four, five, six, you, same dream. I was walking with him. So I knew that I'm supposed to go find this man when I grow up. I've been searching for him everywhere, you know. So um, sometimes you have dreams, sometimes you have intuitions, sometimes you hear something in your ear, you, and it's coming from inside. The voice is coming from inside, you know? And so, you know, boy, I'm, I'm not me. I, <laughs> I'm, a, you know, a bundle of uh, energies that God is using. Mm. Yeah, I kind of had this experience the other day. It's great that you're bringing it up where I think I was, I was driving and I don't remember what I drove past, but I drove past something and then I, it was gone. And I, I thought to myself, I didn't really see that clearly. And something said to me, you know, stop, turn around oh. and go see it. And then another part of me, and it's hard to kind of decipher, you know, what aspects within myself are talking. The other aspects said like, you can't just stop all day long, you know, you won't be able to follow a path mm -hmm. if I'm just, you know, oh, I got to go look at this thing. I got to go do this thing. I'd, there was another part of me that just said, you know, you can't do that. Stay focused on where you're going and where you need to be. But I, I acknowledged that there was, there was another aspect that, that seemed to say, no, you should halt whatever your plan is and like what you're saying and go, Did you go back? and do this. I didn't. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. You never know what you would have found. Yeah. And I see it feels like art to me. Like sometimes I know I make the decision to like, oh, like I will follow my intuition do it. It's, it's almost like the intuition and the mind maybe that are they're interacting with each other, something like that. Yeah. There's always the fight inside of us. There's, right. There's two people yeah. in there fighting for control, mm. control of the heart. You know, that's it. So one person is anger, you know. And uh, the other person is uh, contentment, peace, and joy. Mm -hmm. I guess I wish I could see it so clearly <laughs> as that. Yes, you can. You can. When you feel anger mm -hmm. and, and when you feel that, that's, that's not you. That's not you. That's somebody, there's somebody in your living room that broke into your house. Mm -hmm. So sit down. You say, come here. You have a problem? Let's sit down. You meditate with the anger. Hold it. Hold the anger. Meditate on it. What do you want? You will turn it into your light. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it's something like maybe the opposite of love, something that doesn't feel like love to me, mm -hmm. then 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 it's clear, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm feeling, you know, anger towards another person or, or, or something like that. But sometimes it's, it's not so clear. Like there doesn't seem to be, um, you know, more love or compassion in a certain action, one action or the other. But we, I still have to decide one way. But both choices seem to be okay. If I do this or if I do that, mm -hmm. either one is okay. Mm -hmm. This time I'm going to go this way and that time I'm going to go that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So how do <laughs> you end up feeling after that? Depending on the choice I make, mm -hmm. you mean? Mm -hmm. 
If you don't address it and you clear it up, how do you feel after that? Every choice is different. I think the most important thing for me is the acceptance of the choice that I make, that it's okay that I made the choice. Yeah. And in some situations, I say, well, I accept the choice I made, but next time I'm going to do a different, I'm going to make an, another choice. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. how we learn. Right. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, just, you know, having a guru. And it seems that having a guru is something that some, for some people it's very natural and other people it feels, it doesn't feel natural. They can't understand it. Why do you think that people react so differently to the idea of having a guru? Because we're, even though we're all God's children, okay, <laughs> you have some kids that are, you know, younger, you have a six month old baby, and then you have a four year old and a 16 year old, and they have different understandings. They're content to do play over here with this, and they're content to do this. And the 16-year-old wants to go to college. He wants to be a doctor one day. It doesn't make the four-year-old less important than the 16-year-old. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So everybody's in a different... They're grow, We're all growing up, you know? Yeah. Like Karen Ananda said to me, you're like six years old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was our joke. So everybody's in a, a different stage of development. Mm -hmm. mm. And if you're over here playing with your toys, why would you want to go do something else? So if I'm understanding you, though, it, you're saying, though, that to have a relationship with a guru, in your opinion, is a is a mature state to be in. Okay. When... Stephen sent me here to meet Gurudev. He kept saying, he was a Vedic astrologer. He kept saying to me, go see Swami Satchitananda, he's your guru. And I was like, I don't need a guru. Mm -hmm. I am the guru. So all I'm saying is that was my understanding at the time, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm the same person, you know, a few decades later, but that was my understanding at the time. Yeah. I was differing, I was, that's where I was, you know? So, and this is where I am now. Does that answer it? Yeah, I think it's in the right time. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the time is right and you are more and more awakened, you know, that's how you feel. Mm. Mm -hmm. And how about, you know, many people living in Sangha together all having a different relationship, being in a different place, you know, what's, what's essential to you in order to keep the Sangha, you know, peaceful and loving within such a various, very degree of perspectives. Yeah. What is essential to keep them everybody happy? No, happy or just to keep it a healthy Sangha. When you have people that, that are so different within the Sangha, mm -hmm. how can we all coexist with each other? Mm-hmm. The only reason we coexist is because of Swami Satchitananda. Okay, this, this is not a physical place on a map. It's not a town. It's not a village. This is a, a loka. It's a vibration. So when we come from outside, we come to a heavenly realm. It's in the Vedas. Where the Guru lives, where his ashram is, is where the heavens is. You know, so that's... You know, as long as you have a few people here that that have faith in in God and Guru, that energy stays around and we can all coexist. He that energy is responsible for making us all work it out. That energy is responsible for, you know, steering the pot. For and why? Enlightenment. So that we mm. all awaken. I know it doesn't make sense. Perhaps what I'm saying, but that's what it is, you know. Yeah, and do you think that's happening not only in you know our community, but in the the global community of the planet as well? I, I don't know about other places, um, but I think, yeah, 
And even if we have to lose the planet, that's also part of enlightenment, you know. The years ago, uh, you know Carlos that lives across the street? Sure, yeah. Okay. He said years ago he went to see the Dalai Lama uh, in Washington, D.C. when he had come. He also came here years ago. We saw him in Charlottesville. Were you here at the time? We saw him all day. We went to all the talks. And um, the Dalai, and somebody asked him the question. Uh, they said, what happens, you know, if, if it, nobody's getting along and we're ready to blow up the planet and, you know, and we've been doing all these practices and what's going to happen to the yogis and all us? And he goes, oh, don't worry. He said, and even if we lose the planet, I will get you another planet. That's what he said. And Gurudev told us the same thing, right? <laughs> Somebody asked. <laughs> and they said, why, do we, why are we, you know, they might blow us up. They have nuclear weapons and we have nuclear. He said, I will get you another planet, you know. Mm. So it's a different energy. Our, our limited minds are living in a box and we can't see the real of what's happening mm. and why. But there's a plan. And no matter what happens, it was all decided long ago and it will be okay. I don't know if this answers your question. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Too. <laughs> well, faith. Again, back, faith. back to the faith. Faith. Yeah. The whole cre universe cre was created by faith and love. The whole universe is love and faith. Without that, we have nothing. Mm. We have this nothing. You know? So it seems like, like faith and humility are kind of closely related. Yes, but the ego doesn't like humility. <laughs> Yes. You know, the, the ego wants to know, right? <laughs> right? To be and to be sure. That's right. Yeah. What about me? <laughs> yeah, I'm so sure about this. I want. I want to be right. So, but it's hard sometimes because, right? We feel sure, and we feel like I know. For you, if that comes up, where you like, you think you know something about a person or thing or whatever it is, do you have a practice of kind of seeing that and then bringing yourself? back to a space of humility of, of not knowing? Well, you always have a gut feeling. Y your gut is God, you know, your intuition is God. That's what God is, your intuition. So you, don't you have it? Yeah, but I don't, see, I don't, I, okay, I grew up with a mother that talked about this all the time. Oh. <laughs> my gut, my intuition, like yes. she was a very strong proponent of it. Mm. Right. But I'll give you an example. I was with her actually last week and uh, my sister is uh, is pregnant and we're asking, do you think it's a boy or a girl? And my mom was so sure that it was a boy. She said, oh, it's a boy. It's a boy. So this is a person that totally trusts her intuition. It's the most important thing for her. She said, we ended up doing a reveal and all finding out together. It's a girl. Okay. And I've had lots of experiences that with Well, that with doesn't my disqualify her intuition. I'm not saying Come it disqualifies. On. I'm just saying that it's not always correct either that I've learned. Sometimes we say what we really want, what we wish. You see? Uh, that's my point is that it's kind of it's hard. <laughs> it's hard right. to um, interpret Right. The intu what is intuition and what is mind? It right. seems like these things are like right, kind of right. all mixed up together. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, you you know it. Intuition is it's it's a gut feeling and you do we do have to get out of our way sometimes, you know. And um and be humble and go meditate. If we meditate, then we'll get clear. If if we think we want this, then the mind will say it's this, you know. So, um, but I feel meditation, when I'm not clear, I feel meditating uh, clears me up a lot. Do you meditate on a certain topic? Like if you're not feeling clear on a certain topic or something going on in your life that you'll meditate on that? Or you'll just go in and meditate and then clarity will arise on whatever the no, thing is. Only meditate on mantra. Only. Nothing else. Not the breath, not the light, not my body, not a chakra, nothing, nothing, nothing. 
only the mantra exists. Only meditate on the mantra. And then intuition pops out. Mm. You know? How about prayer? I mean, we, we say prayers all the time, but no, not during meditation, you mean? Like, what? yeah, what's the relationship between prayer and meditation for you, right? Like, if you're having a, something happening in your life and you want to pray about it, would that happen during meditation or would it happen outside of meditation? Well, this is my prayer. Okay, Gurudev, you know what I want. So if it pleases you, uh, please give me this. That's my prayer. Mm. If it pleases you to give it to me, if it's good for me, would you please give it to me? Right, that's the highest prayer with the humility again, saying like, you know what, you know what's best for me. <laughs> well, right. I've heard him say, you know, that's the highest prayer. <laughs> right. I don't know what's best for me. You know what's best for me. Yeah. Please continue to guide me. Right. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, and if you do like this, then I'm not going to do that. I negotiate with him. <laughs> <laughs> I do. How does that I work? I want this. <laughs> well, then it's is it is, is it sincere then? If of you're saying I it's want if, if you're saying I want this, yeah. then that's kind of that's right, that's He plays with me. You know what I want, you know? So give it to me. And if I don't get it, okay, you win. How can I win? I'm like a gnat and he's like the whole universe, the ocean. So what what am I going to do about it? Not take my wants so seriously, maybe? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even exist. <laughs> We're here going quack, 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 but it's all God. You know, mm. everything's God. God is there, 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 all around. Yeah, I get like a sense of lightness hearing you talk about that. And is that is that the real the real juice from these practices, these teachings, all of it is, is a feeling of, of not being so like heavy or taking this whole experience that we're having so seriously. Yes, because nothing is real. Nothing. Not even if they blow up the planet tomorrow, it's not real. Hmm. You know, not, none of it is real. None of it. It's like a mandala the, the Buddhists make on the floor and then they wipe it down. How many times has that happened? Countless of times. And for yourself, can you see a certain progression that's happened for you where maybe in, in your past you did feel more heaviness or took things more seriously and now you feel lighter and freer? Yeah. Every time I say, I want this, you know, Th this is right. I am justified. I am right. You know, I should get this. You know, everybody, even if you talk to other people, they'll say, yes, you're right, you know. And then I do it and I break my face all over the place. <laughs> and then, you know, that's yeah. how we know is when we break our face. And then we know, oops. Uh, and so I learned now, like, oh, can I have this, you know. So that's. Mm. Do you find that it's getting maybe a little easier or more comfortable for you to mm, use the times, as you say, like when you break your face to redirect you back? It's more comfortable. Say that again. Is it becoming like... Is it becoming... Oh, it's time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's time you get more and more enlightened. Mm. Absolutely. And you know, you know, every time you get stronger and stronger because you realize that that's all that's going to happen. It's like I'm a two-year-old running out to the street and my mom coming to get me back. Come back. Right. Come back. Come back. And he he never runs out of patience with me, you know. Yeah. He's always saving me from running out in the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm do it, trying to do it less and less nowadays, but... You feel justified to run out to the street, maybe to save somebody else, and then you could get hit by a truck or something. That almost happened one time. <laughs> mm. But it's, it's also that feeling, I think, that comes when when you're brought back, mm -hmm. right? If the mother is bringing you back or the guru is bringing you back, yeah. you know, that, that feeling of, of, of really, maybe it's safety, uh, maybe it's beyond a word to even put it, but that feeling of rightness then says, oh, yes, like, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the more that I experience that, 
the more comfortable, the more um, trust I have in maybe helping myself return. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep, absolutely. And your faith grows stronger every time. Mm. And you get more and more clear and more and more enlightened each time. Mm. So really maybe to, to just look at it, like what am I doing all the time? I'm practicing. That. Yeah, that's all we're doing. It's like meditation. We think I'm going to meditation. Nobody's going to meditation. We're all trying to concentrate. It's like a battle with the mind. So all you can do is say, the scriptures say, if you're sitting there and you're trying to concentrate for years and years and years, finally God will come in and he'll, you feel Shh, something came, picked you up and meditated you. And you're for a little bit, like you're on a starship and there's no thoughts. Okay, this is totally God's grace, his energy. He's done with you. He moves away and you're back with the mind. Mind slowly comes back again. It comes back. It was back here. It's coming back again. Okay, so all that's that's all grace. Mm. So all we're doing is, is uh, we're not meditating. We're concentrating. And, and while you're trying to concentrate, the mind will tell you, Oh, you're just wasting your time because look at me. I can mess you up. I can make you feel like this and that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Say, okay, fine. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here in the hall meditating with my sangha. And I'm. you do whatever you want. Jump and run. I'm going to repeat my mantra. You can go ahead and mess it up what you want, you know. Mm. You don't want to talk to the mind too much, but that's what we're all doing. Some something that I've started to do lately is, I, I'm 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 trying to be like teammates with my mind, a little bit. It's not yeah. Look at it as you know, there's anything wrong. Like just what you said, even that it's mm -hmm. all okay. You want to run, jump, whatever yeah. you want to do is okay. Um, but also, I think I've gotten better at convincing my mind mm -hmm. that taking a break is actually better for it. Yes. And it seems to, my mind seems to accept that and be on board with that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's that's where you want to be because your mind can become your best friend. Our minds become our best friends. Then they try to help us toward enlightenment instead of trying to block it because they're afraid they're going to lose control, you know? Yeah, and it seems to me like that the the case of what I what I notice both with myself and, and, and around is is really the, the case of an exhausted mind more, more than anything else, is that when the mind is exhausted and overly stimulated, it's not going to be able to work with us and help us mm -hmm. as much. Mm -hmm. So through meditation and other practices, we can learn to rest the mind. And therefore, when it is the time to use it appropriately, it's mm -hmm. well rested and able to focus on whatever we want it to focus on. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Rested or or become sharper, uh, more peaceful. I don't mean sharper as in to harm, but sharper, you know, clearer like that. So, in terms of the the future for yourself, like, do you is, do you notice for yourself? Just my my intention is just to let go as much as possible, and I don't really have. Uh, any intentions for the future um, or there also is a place for setting an intention, having a goal for something to come to be? Um, I don't know what type of a goal you're talking about. My goal is to be more and more peaceful, more and more useful and more and more, you know, clear. So I don't have any other, you know, So is it kind goals. of just like a waiting to see what's going to happen? Yeah, I'm not worried about, you know, I want to be this or I want to get that. I want to do my job around here. You know, that's mm. my goal. <laughs> mm. So that's definitely, you know, what they ex tell me to do. So and, and do it the best of my ability, you know, mm. but no, no personal. I don't have a personal agenda for anything. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Mm. How about gratitude for you? Is that something that you practice or can you speak about your relationship with gratitude it's yeah it's all gratitude yeah 
It's all I I cry with gratitude every day when I talk to Guru Dev. Mm-hmm. Specifically for him. Yes, for him. Because without him, I would be dead. He saved my soul, not even my life, my soul. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you know where I came from, <laughs> mm. I came from a family of politicians in Greece and mm. business people, mm. you know. And my grandma, who was the matriarch, was very spiritual. He would go around her, ha- her house and burn incense, and they were all, she's crazy because she was burning incense mm. and chanting the Christian mantra, you know? So, and I was like, wow, look at her. What is this, you know? So, so that was in me a lot. Now it's less in me, but that's where I came from. So I have a lot of gratitude for who I am today, being alive today and who I am because I came along. He brought me a long way. Yeah. Mm. Do you think it's possible for someone to have that type of relationship with Gurudev, even though he's no longer in the body? For, for someone like who? Somebody like, like, that lives like, around like here? T- just anyone. Yes. You know, even, they, even though the, the, like you share the experience that you had with him and, yeah. and what happened there mm-hmm. while he was in the body. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's possible for someone to have a similar experience? Of course. Yeah. Everybody can have that. Okay. Does it seem like it's a little more challenging maybe without the, no. the body? No. He's mm. more powerful now. Mm. You know, when Gurda was in the body, when I came here, I was not a karma yogi. 25 years ago, I was not a karma yogi. I couldn't understand what these people are doing here, you know, because to me, intellectually, uh, if you want a, a, a result, you, you want a reward, and you want moksha, which is such a big thing, why is this karma yoga? You know, you're getting the highest pay. So I, I, I was more of a bhakti. I was just chanting and meditating and singing to God all the time. It was work. He sent me to work in distribution. You know that, right? Mm. I was working there for 15 years. So um, why did I start to tell you this now? What was the question? The question was if someone can have a similar experience or yeah. relationship. Yeah. So when he left the body, I, I still... I, I was not a karma yogi. I would do only a few things, you know, that I wanted to do, and then I didn't want to do anything else. You know what I'm talking about. And then I thought, I have a problem. You know, I'm a bhakta. They're all karma yogis. None of them. They're not like, you know. So I went downstairs in the guha every day, you know, in Chidambaram. And I walked around with a prayer for years. And I said, please make me into a karma yogi. Please make me into a karma yogi. (laughs) And I would walk around for a long time every day. Please make me into a karma yogi. And it happened. (laughs) You know? Uh, And now I find such joy and I don't intellectualize it or, you know, uh, know, anything. I don't judge you know, what I'm doing. I just do it. They tell me, go do this. I do it. Unless I physically can't do it. I'll say, I can't lift this. You know, it's going to put out my back and I'll have to go to the chiropractor or something like that, you know. Hmm. So, yeah, it's possible for anyone. All they have to do is ask. Hmm. Gurdav, help me. I want to be like this. And and they'll help. Gurd, but they need to ask for help, you know. Hmm. This is a very powerful guru. Hmm. He's not... Just anybody, you know. We have enlightened people on this planet, lots of them. But there's different, okay, <laughs> masters. <laughs> you know, the Dalai Lama, Gurudev, Dada Vaswani, those are giants. You know, there's not too many of them. So he, he was the incarnation of Vishnu when he was in the body. When the Guru's in the body, he's the incarnation of Lord Vishnu, the preserver of the universe. When he leaves the body, he becomes Lord Shiva. Mm. He clears up our, you know, problems. You mentioned before God and Guru. 
What is the the distinction there between God and Guru? There's no distinction. Okay. God and Guru are one and the same being. There's no distinction. Yeah. Would you mind? Thank you so much. Would you mind uh, leading us in another prayer? Yeah. As we end. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Dev, for letting us communicate in such a beautiful way, mm -hmm. guiding our lives. We're so grateful to you and our beloved Sangha all together. And thank you for being with us and enlightening us and holding our hand and saving us. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sukandim Pushtivartanam Urvaru Kamiva Bandanan Mrityor Muksiya Mamritat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sukandim Pushtivartanam Urvaru Kamiva Bandanan Mrityor Muksiya Mamritat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sukandim Pushtivartanam Urvaru Kamiva Bandanan Brityor Muksiya Mamritat Om Shanti 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 Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Jai Sri Sadguru Sachitananda Ji Maharaj Ki Jai Jai the Sangha Jai Thanks so much Yes, thank you that was fun. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this content and think others might as well, please feel free to share and subscribe.